Noriko Yui es bastante conocida en el área de Calabilla Guava, es geometría aritmética, física, y ha trabajado por mucho tiempo en este tipo de trabajos. Entonces, su práctica de hoy tiene que ver un poco con aritmética y física, como veremos. Eh, aritmética en el sentido más tradicional, en el sentido de geometría algebraica aritmética. Eh, y es un, la primera vez que está en México, es la primera vez que viene aquí al Distrito Federal y al Instituto, por lo tanto, y esperemos que regrese pronto, ¿no? <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the um, invitation to visit Mexico. This is my first time here, I'm enjoying it very much. Okay, so today's uh, lecture is an introduction to Calabial varieties. Arithmetic and geometry, physics. Physics part is a string theory. Okay, so uh, uh, it does. Okay, so the uh, two questions I'm going to sort about pause here, but I'm I only have one. I'm only have one hour to address the first. One. Uh, in fact, I'm giving a series of mini course at CMAT. Uh, I'm doing the uh, second part this week and then next week. So if you are interested in the second part of this geometric modularity, you go to the web page of the CMAT mini course. Okay, so the arithmetic modularity uh, or the morphy, this, um, this is about uh, Calabiao manifold uh, varieties defined over number field, or so we can consider simplest case, the rationals. And the question here is something posed by Langlands. All these varieties should be automorphic. And uh, uh, so to uh, form, uh, to, to um, formulate this uh, Langland philosophy, you have to introduce something called L series, which consists of counting number of rational points on varieties, and then I cook up this L series. And then his philosophy is that uh, uh, for any algebraic varieties, not necessarily Calabial, this L series of algebraic, algebraic varieties over Q or number field should be determined by some modular or uh, automorphic forms. That's a philosophy. Okay. Uh, so, so this is something I would like to address. So Langland philosophy or arithmetic modularity. So I just mentioned L functions of algebraic varieties over Q are automorphic. Uh, so L functions, uh, well, if you want to consider the entire varieties, it's a bit too hard to determine. So you may just look at some chunk of it. That's defined something called the motivic error function. And uh, I'll discuss uh, some motivic error functions as well. So in this lecture, I'll just uh, consider Calabial varieties defined over Q of dimension up to three. So. Um, uh, what are Calabial varieties? So here is the definition. Uh, so a smooth projective variety defined over C of dimension D is called Calabial if these two conditions are satisfied. Uh, Calabial condition one, these cohomology groups HI, X, OX, OX is a structure shift. This should be zero for every I sitting between zero and D, not including N. And second condition, Calabial condition two, is that canonical bundle is trivial, meaning canonical bundle is isomorphic to OX. Okay, so you know what Calabial varieties are. Not quite. <laughs> All right, so uh, to do, uh, to, uh, to formulate these uh, conditions numerically, I'll introduce something called Hodge numbers. 
This is the dimension of the Hotchko homology groups involving uh, the shifts of differential forms. So uh, this is the dimension of this Hj x omega xi. So this you can define for any i and j between 0 and d, including end. Uh, so from the definition and also from duality installed in this Hodge homology groups, uh, this you can flip i and j. This comes from complex conjugation. And also you can flip i by d minus i and j by d minus j. D is the dimension. This is called the Sayer duality, uh, sitting uh, in, in, those, in this homology groups. Uh, so if you introduce these Hodge numbers, we can express Calabiao condition 1 and 2. Uh, so Calabiao condition 1 is saying that Hi is 0. This is the same as H0i. These guys are 0 for every i between sitting at 0 and d. And second condition implies, it's this uh, not the if and only if condition, it's only implication. Uh, d is the dimension d0, this by duality, this is a 0d. This is the dimension of this space here. Now, Calabiao conditions uh, says that the uh, well, this, uh, these uh, differential forms, so this is just a canonical bundle. And then canonical bundle being trivial, so this dimension becomes one. So this H0D is called the geometric genus. Okay, so Calabiao is the, that the geometric genus one, uh, and the HI0 vanishes. That's the Calabiao conditions. Okay, so uh, now you define all these uh, Hodge numbers, then uh, you can define Betch numbers. Betch uh, numbers, the Betch number, case Betch number, is the dimension of the singular cohomology group, and we have the Hodge decomposition. So Betch uh, number is the sum of Hodge numbers, which add up I plus J is equal to K. And once you have Betchy numbers, you can, take in, you can take alternating sums to define the Euler characteristic. Okay, so let, these are the numerical characters. So, Hotch. So, so now I'm, I'm trying to give you a definition, I mean, a, not definition, examples. But our, because we have a lot of, lot of Hotch, Hotch numbers, I'll make a Hotch diamond. So, uh, so, so dimension is one. Only thing is uh, from Calabria condition here is that H10, which is equal to H01. Oh no, this is not one. It, uh, the, 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 this, this is the geometric genus. Okay. So the condition one is empty because there is no integer between zero and one. Right. So this uh, Calabria condition two says that this is one. H00 is 1, H10, 01, these are 1, and H11 is also 1. These are the Hotch, Hotch diamond. Now, if you add these guys horizontally, that Hotch decomposition tells you, you can add these guys horizontally to obtain Betchy numbers. So V0 is 1, V1 is 2, V2 is 1. If you take alternating sum of these Betchy numbers, Euler characteristic is zero. So the, this numerical characterization of elliptic curve. So dimension one, Calabiaos are nothing but elliptic curves, which everybody knows. You study, and, right? Elliptic curves are Calabiaos of dimension one. And if you want to consider elliptic curves over Q, uh, or this also you learn in your class that uh, they are defined by cubic equations with uh, uh, it's 4a cubed plus 27b squares is not equal to zero. Meaning, right hand side have three distinct roots. Let's go to dimension two. Okay, dimension two, uh, Calabiao condition one says that h one zero and H01, they are zero. 
Calabial condition 2 says that H20 and H02 is 1. The geometric genus is 1. So if you make a Hotch diamond, you'll get H10, this is 0, and H20, which is 1. And then there is a duality here, so you can you get these two guys here. And also duality holding along the horizontal line here. Now, uh, so, so if you add, well, I haven't explained why I put 20 here. That will come in the next slide. Uh, so, so the Betchi number, the Ross Betchi number is 1, first Betchi number is 0, and second Betchi number is 22. B3 is 0, B4 is 1. If you take an alternating sum, Euler characteristic is 24. So, reason why I put 20 here is coming from something called the Max Netas formula. Uh, the Euler characteristic of the structure sheaf is the uh, first Chan number square plus second Chan number divided by 12. Okay? So the first Chan number is 0, okay. and then second Chan number is 24 for case threes. This is a uh, different consideration from Max Netas. Uh, so, so, and then uh, all the characteristic of structure C with the, this guy here, which is 2. So 2 is equal to, uh, to 12 over, over all the 24. So, uh, but then the you, all the characteristic is obtained by, if you go to the previous page, all the characteristic is the alternating sum, B0 plus B2 plus B4. So if you equate that, what? Conclusion is that you have to put 20 here. That's the case. This is called the case three surfaces. These are called case three surfaces. Why it's case three? K is a initial of three great mathematicians: Kuma, Kera, Kodaira. That's why it's called case three. All right. Okay, so the examples of K3 services, these typical examples are any cortic services in P3. Okay, whatever the equation is, for typical example is a ferromagnetic, or you may take one parameter deformation. Uh, reason here is that the canonical bundle, uh, so, so N is the dimension of the projective space, D is the degree of a hypersurface, so canonical bundle is the OX D minus N minus 1. Calabial condition says that this guy has to be trivial, which is OX, which, in, which implies that the D has to be equal to N plus 1. So if you take a cubic dimension 3 projective space, then uh, the equation has to have degree 4. So that's why any cortic in P3 will give you a K3 surface. And also, this second example is the generalization of elliptic curve. For dimension one, at the, you had the y squared is equal to cubic. Now, in this case, you take w squared is a degree six homogeneous polynomial. So w sex six surface. These are case three surfaces. Of course, you can also take elliptic surface. Now, the coefficient is not just the integer, but some polynomials uh, of uh, another parameter t. So these are called elliptic K3 surfaces. And there are many, many examples. The toric construction will give you K3. Toric is the uh, some reflexive polytops. So now, so uh, dimension three. Now, this is where you really see a lot of uh, this condition the Calabial condition, 1, 0, 0, 1 is 0, 2, 0, and 0, 2 is 0, 3, 0 is 1, and H11, this number, uh, this, this is called uh, representing a Kera class, and then the Calabial manifold, a Kera manifold. So this number has to be uh, positive, cannot be zero. So if you put the Hodge diamond, you say H00 is 1, H10, H20, Calabial condition says that these two guys are 0. 
And the Calabria condition 2 says that H30 is 1. So if you do the duality here, you can fill in all this 0. And then these two guys are the same, these two are the same. So that's the Hochi diamond for Calabria 3 fold. So if you add horizontally, B0 is 1, B1 is 0, B2 is H11, B3 is a twice because the here duality is along this line here, H21 and H12 are the same. So you get twice of 1 plus H21, and B4 is H22, B5 is 0, B6 is 1. So if you take alternating sums, Euler characteristic is twice of H11 minus H21. Now compared with the uh, dimension 1 carabia, Euler characteristic was zero. It's a fixed constant. For K3, Euler characteristic was 24, whatever the K3 surfaces you took. It's a fixed constant. Now in this case, for Calabial threefold, H11 and H21, they can vary freely, free agent. So uh, Euler characteristic is not the fixed constant. And it, uh, it's a big problem here is that uh, is Euler characteristic actually bounded? This is still a big question, open question. Uh, string theorist says that, oh, no, no, this is bounded. And whatever the examples we constructed, this number is 960. <laughs> OK, it, or it's, uh, we don't know why. And then mathematicians, uh, well, we believe that uh, this number is infinite. Okay, so this is still an open question. So, uh, 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 examples, examples by the same reason as I gave you for the uh, case three surfaces, any quintic threefold in P4, they are Calabial threefold. Okay? So the Fermat cortex or one parameter deformations. And then uh, you, you, know, you, can you can also consider these guys not just, the, just, not just in the ordinary projective space, but uh, you can consider also in the weighted projective spaces, giving a weight to each variable. And of course, uh, so, so the elliptic curve had the cubic, um, K3 surfaces are double, double, double sextic. So Calabial threefold, you can take double octic. That's also K3, uh, Calabial. And then, uh, of course, you can take a product types, complete intersections, toric Calabial. So we constructed toric construction gives you about 600 million Calabial threefold. Okay. So once we construct so many of them, uh, string theory, uh, uh, yeah, so, so they all, the 600 million uh, uh, constructions, uh, H11 and H21 is about 500, and Euler characteristic is uh, 960. Uh, so, so string theorists came up with some uh, string theory, something called string vacua about the uh, at the, about 10 to the 500 uh, models for the real world. That <laughs> okay. uh, but then um, somehow this uh, estimate, uh, so somehow it's, uh, well, you can reduce to some uh, computation of Picard Hooke's differential equations. And then the monodromy group being uh, arithmetic or thin, and then uh, uh, the monodromy group is not always arithmetic. So this bound is uh, somewhat um, physicist prediction is not uh, it's not right. Uh, it doesn't seem to be correct. Okay. So uh, in the physics, uh, what we will do is something called the mirror symmetry. So this is just a topological version of a mirror symmetry. It's much more to mirror symmetry than just this. Uh, so if, when you have a, a Calabial threefold, with the, uh, you have a, now you, it's, uh, Hodge numbers, H11 and H21. Uh, mirror symmetry conjecture says that there is a mirror partner to this Calabial threefold, which I call X hat. 
and then uh, this Hochi numbers, H11, X hat, or this have to be capital, uh, H, oh no, H21 of X hat, which interchanges, interchanges. So H11 of X hat of the mirror will be the H21 of the original carabial, and the H21 of the mirror will be the H11 of the original carabial, so that the Euler characteristic change sign. So that's the prediction. Always when you're given the Calabial 3 fold, you can find the mirror partner in this sense. And when you, uh, it's because uh, some calculations, when you go to the mirror side, it becomes much simpler. So this is the uh, physicist's invention. Uh, so, so we plotted all these things, 600 million plot here. Uh, so, so, oh no, I cannot, I cannot do this here. <laughs> All right, so uh, mirror symmetry lines occurs here. Uh, this is the vertical line. Uh, so, so on the one side, uh, we just uh, plot it on the left-hand side of this picture, uh, on this side. And if mirror symmetry conjecture is true, you can flip this to the other side. So this. So if the uh, highest one is above 500 here, and then this, this side horizontally, horizontal line, and this, uh, this would be the Euler characteristic, and then this side is H11 plus H21. So this would, uh, this would be the distribution of uh, Calabria threefold by uh, toric construction, and if mirror symmetry is conjectured through, you also get the symmetric side on here. That's the mirror symmetry. Okay. So uh, what we are trying to do is the um, arithmetic modularity. The L series, so, uh, uh, so now this is the formulation of L series. So now we will consider Calabial varieties defined over Q. So it was a hypersurface or a complete intersection. And then uh, because everything is defined over Q, we say that uh, kind of, uh, X over Q is Calabial if you consider tensor over C, or geometric invariant will give you Calabial. Okay? So, uh, it's, so it's, you, you, you can choose uh, this, um, so you, you have a, a defining equation for, uh, for your Calabial uh, over Q, but then uh, you can get rid of uh, the denominators, taking a common denominator. You may define uh, this equations are, uh, equations are uh, having coefficient in Z1 over M for some M. Okay, so everything, is, so, so now it's, everything is integers uh, except for this M. So you pick a prime M which doesn't divide M then you can reduce equation modulo m, and uh, modulo p, <laughs> okay? So x of p is the x mod p, and we say that um, p is a good prime, uh, after the, uh, you reduce x mod p, this is also smooth over finite field. And if not, it's, uh, you, you pick up some singularities, you call it back. Okay, so now for good prime, uh, it's a number, it's a, so, so you can uh, con count, uh, you, you are over finite field, so finite field has only finitely many elements. So you can count the number of uh, rational point on this x sub p over finite field. And then, uh, so, so for you do for each case, so over FP, FP squares, FP cube, and so on, and you cook up a zeta function. This is the generating function which counts the number of rational point and divide out by k and teach the k. And you take exponential, this is a generating function. This is called the local zeta function. T is indeterminate. Yes? Question? Yeah, we don't have a minimal model. No, we don't have a, such a final theory. 
so so Emma is the one who any any uh, yeah. so for each example we work M is uh, chosen. We don't have a, because Calabiano's army is six hundred million, so we don't know how to cook up a minimal model or anything. We don't have a very fine theory yet. All right. Okay. So now uh, there is a, 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 a lot of conjectures about this congruent data function. Now it's everything is proven. Uh, so, so what you do is uh, you uh, you cook up generating function which counts the number of rational points uh, on your uh, variety. Uh, but then uh, we need some linear algebra data to express all this counting process in terms of linear algebra. <coughs> so for this, okay, of a finite field, you have the Frobenius morphism, which is induced by peace bar map. And this guy will give you an endomorphism on some vector space, what's called et al. homology group. This is a, the vector space of dimension, vector space over uh, QL, QL, this is the erotic rationals. And so the, the, this is the definition by Grotendieck. Grotendieck introduced this vector space in order to prove something called the Bell conjecture. And then now, uh, first uh, you de define this et al. homology of a finite field, okay? But then specialization theorem says that this guy is the same as over Q, over Q bar. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so then uh, this et al. homology, if you uh, tensor X, X was defined over Q, uh, tensor C, and then look at the singular cohomology, and then there will be isomorphic. Which means that the dimension of the etal cohomology is the Vecchi number. Okay, so this is a QL vector space of dimension V sub I X. Okay, so if you choose a basis, uh, you choose a basis, uh, it's a vector space of dimension V I of X, but then the characteristic polynomial is an independent of choice of basis. So you uh, look at the characteristic polynomial of the Frobenius induced map on this vector space. That's the characteristic polynomial, free, independent of choice of basis. So the vast conjectures are called well conjectures. Now everything has been proven. So this characteristic polynomial has an integer coefficient starting with constant term one and it doesn't depend on the choice of L. And the degree of this polynomial is the same as the degree of the um, et al. homology, which is the I of X. And then uh, there is a duality inside et al. homology. So if you change T by P to D minus I T, it should coincide. And this is the something called the Riemann hypothesis, which Grotendieck couldn't do, but then uh, Dirin proved it. Uh, if, because these guys are having an integer coefficient, so if you go all the way to, uh, it's, uh, it could be Z bar, it's uh, alpha, it's, you can decompose into the linear factors. And then these linear factors are in fact algebraic integers because it comes from Z here. And complex absolute value, P to J over 2. And the zeta function has this expression in, in terms of this characteristic polynomial. In the, uh, the denominator, you put all even dimensional ones, and now uh, above, you put off dimensional Okay, so now, uh, so this uh, absolute Galois group uh, will be acting on this eta homology group, and the absolute Galois group will be generated by you have a Frobenius element here. So uh, the, the, this, in terms of this uh, Langland philosophy and then virus proof and everything is in terms of Galois representations. This is where the Galois representations coming in. So the L series, this is the definition which appears in all proofs of this modularity. L series of your Carabial defined over Q is going through this L series of the et homology, 
and this I, I wrote this star part will be the factor corresponding to bud primes. Uh, I am not going into uh, for even for elliptic curves and Arabia of threefold. We have to work with this produces singularities. But then uh, for good primes, we have already a description here. You just use the characteristic polynomial. And this was uh, P was different from L was different from P. Uh, so there is a, another theory corresponding to L equal P. This is a periodic P homology theory, crystalline homology. So that's the L series. And what is most important here is the d-dimensional one. So we just write this as L of excess d okay, corresponding to HD of A tau, just write as X. L, L of excess. All right. So then uh, this is the uh, formulation uh, to, uh, to address Rangan philosophy. So uh, when um, this vector space, this vector space, it's uh, etal, etal homology groups, uh, this may decompose into a direct sum of subspaces. Okay? Then uh, you can also define the motivic L series corresponding to these subspaces, because the entire expression is just the product of this. Piece. So this is called the motivic L series. Okay? Now uh, this is a, now it's, it's to relate this um, because uh, counting the number of rational point and then in this setting uh, we can relate count of the, this is called the um, refugee fixed refugee fixed point formula. Uh, this is the um, just alternating sum of a trace uh, of Frobenius acting on. This is the connection to string theory. String theory people <laughs> would like this. Okay. So, uh, modularity question, what, what is this? Okay, because LCD is, uh, we, we, once you have the characteristic polynomial for each P, good P, we know the local pieces. But uh, there are infinitely many primes. So uh, you cannot, you, your job is not finished. So Langland philosophy, uh, automorphy or modularity question here is, you won't have some global function independent of P, which will determine this error series. So uh, this uh, global function is something called modular forms or automorphic forms. This is the Langland philosophy. Okay. So the, this is the result, uh, part, part of the result since 1994. Uh, it's, it's almost 20 years ago. So dimension is one. So dimension one, Karabiaus, are elliptic curves. So every elliptic curve, E, defined over Q is module, meaning there is a modular form F of weight 2 on some gamma 0 of N, which will determine your L series. So L series coming from elliptic curve is the same as L series coming from this modular form. Okay, so left hand side, we constructed counting number of rational points for each P, we did that. This side is totally independent of P. Dimension two. Uh, so, so these are the things I'm going to explain in the remaining times, how it's got done, and so on. Uh, dimension two, every singular K3 surface defined over Q is modular. That is, this modularity is a motivic modularity. There is a modular form F weight three. Three is a two plus one on some gamma zero of n together with a mod n character such that transcendental part, this is the motivic L series associated to the transcendental part of this uh, transcendental cycles of elliptic curve 
uh, sorry, cursory surface should come from this uh, modular form F twisted by this character. And dimension three, every rigid Calabial threefold over Q is modular. So there is a modular form weight four. Four is a three plus one in gamma zero of n, such that the L series of Calabial threefold, rigid Calabial is the same as L series coming from this modular form. So I'll explain this uh, statement. So first, you have to know what modular forms are. So you uh, look, consider SL2Z. This is a two by two matrices with integer coefficient. And the determinant is one. So you can, uh, you can identify A, B, C, D with minus A, minus B, minus C, minus D, and introduce gamma will be uh, PSL to Z. So this gamma is missing here, gamma. Okay. Gamma is generated by two elements. S is the reflection, and then uh, T is the uh, sort of a uh, one, zero, zero, one. So sort of translation. So this group gamma will act on the upper half complex plane by the linear fractional transformation which send any point on the upper half complex plane acted on element from gamma to linear fraction, AZ plus B over CZ plus D. Okay, because of this definition, minus A minus B minus C minus D will give you the same point. Okay? And now this, this uh, action of gamma uh, on the upper half complex plane will introduce some fixed point. So call P1 of Q as a fixed point. So if X and 1 is a fixed point, identify this with a rational point, rational number Q, and X on 0 will be identified with infinity. So now fix the integer N bigger than 1 or equal 1. If N equal 1, you get back gamma. So gamma 0 of N is the element of gamma, where C is divided by N. Okay, so this is a subgroup of gamma. Oops. So the definition of modular form of, uh, of weight k and the level n on this concurrent subgroup is a holomorphic function, holomorphic function h to c satisfying modular form condition one. So uh, if you look at the um, value of uh, modular form uh, F uh, under here, AZ plus B over CZ plus B, and then consider, uh, compare this with the original value. It's, you have to multiply CZ plus B to the K. Okay, that's true for any element. And then F have to be holomorphic at all cusps. Uh, but then now, uh, because, uh, so 1, 1, 0, 1, because C is divisible by any, 0 is divisible by any N. So this is the element of gamma 0 of N. And so this uh, action of T here is that uh, Z plus 1 is equal to F of Z. That, me, that means F has a Fourier expansion at the infinity. So you can write out Fourier expansion in this form. Okay, so uh, cusp I infinity corresponds to Q equals zero. Q is the each to pi I Z, and F is holomorphic at I infinity. When you do this expansion here, Fourier expansion, all negative terms will disappear. And then F vanishes at I infinity, the constant term also disappears. So these are the things you uh, consider. And cusp form is a modular form which vanishes at all cusps. We know what happens uh, at infinity. So from infinity to the rational cusp, there is a map. So you can also consider at rational cusps what is happening. So those are the modular forms. And also we can define modular forms with the mod n character chi. So uh, modular form was just this part here, but then the character you have to twist with chi sub d.
So if you do fully expansion, you have to twist Kaiser bend here. All right. So uh, now, so so how do you um, prove this result? Or D equal one. This is the theorem of wires, 1994, and then uh, completed by um, the BCFT, as, as several of his former students, and now that 2001. So every elliptic curve E over Q is modular. That means there is a cusp form weight 2. 2 is a diamond, D plus 1, from gamma 0 of N. That's that uh, P1 of ES, this is just uh, cons uh, constructed using uh, characteristic polynomial for each good P. Well, for elliptic curves, so we know what kind of bad primes should occur and what the ends are. And, uh, uh, so that should coincide with the uh, modular form coming from here. And then here N, N gamma zero of N is the conductor of E because E has a minimal model, so you can define conductor. So elliptic curve has a much, much uh, more complete theory for everything to determine these guys. And then, uh, so uh, in terms of Galois representation, this guy, because uh, H, H1 of et al E is two dimension. Okay, so in terms of Galois representations, you are just studying two-dimensional erratic Galois representations associated to it. So this is the proof. This is the language of wires and his company's proof. Okay. So L of ES, I, I, because I want to compare this with the Caribbean case, so I just remind you, L of ES, for good prime, we had number of rational point. This is a one minus trace, that's the deficit fixed point formula, and plus p. And then, uh, so this uh, t sub 1p is bounded by, absolute value is bounded by twice of p of 1 over 2. Okay, 1 is the dimension. Uh, so that's the, it's a characteristic polynomial has this expression. And then the L series just constructed this. That corresponds to, so, so if you expand uh, modular form weight 2 of level n in the Fourier expansion, using a coefficient of a Fourier expansion, you cook up a Dirichlet series. And then uh, conjecture here is that normalization is that they have 1 equal 1, then these coefficients all coincide. That's, this, that's the modularity statement for elliptic curves. Okay, so this is a proof given by Wiles and company, but uh, we don't really understand why it's modular. This part of the question has to come from, uh, uh, well, th th this question was asked to Wiles, and Wiles said the elliptic curve has too many symmetries, so it has to be modular or something. But uh, actually, I think, um, uh, actual answer have to come from physics. That's um, okay. So the natural natural generalization of elliptic curves is to Calabi-Yau three fold, but not for the entire Calabi-Yau three fold. Uh, we'll define a Calabi-Yau three fold x over q is rigid if h two one is zero. So the hot diamond, H21, usually sitting here, but that is zero. So if you look at the B3, you get two. Okay, so, uh, so, so uh, elliptic curve case, you had one, 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 that's the hot diamond, that gave you two. So this case, you have, uh, you know, you put the zero, stretching this bit, and you put zero, zero here, and so on. Uh, so, so this is a really, a really, um, uh, uh, natural generalization of elliptic curves. So this is a rigid Calabian. The, it's, so it's uh, so only only Betty number is H11. Now it's a Kera Kera manifold. So H11 is non-zero, and the Euler characteristic is twice of H11. Now if you do a mirror symmetry, mirror symmetry occurs on this line. H11 and H21 have to be interchanged. If you go to the mirror side, H11 becomes Z, which is not the Calabiao anymore. So for rigid Calabiao, you don't have a mirror pattern. 
So these are much more arithmetic objects. So uh, theorem, which uh, my former postdoc Goubert, uh, and independently by Durafe, we proved every rigid Calabria of threefold x defined over q is modular, meaning there is a modular form. I, I, it's a modular form of weight four. It's a dimension plus one on gamma zero of n, such that the x the L series coincide with this guy. Now, contrary to this, it's not it's unlike to so, so n. How do you determine this n? This is a big question. Uh, n is divisible only by bad primes. So we cannot nail down what is the uh, really this n, what kind of exponent we have to take for each bad primes. We have to do the uh, case by case analysis. Equation, defining equation, yeah. So for each defining equation, we have to do this. N, so n is five, then uh, you try five, five squares, five cubed. And this part of the theory is uh, not uh, completely, uh, we don't have a final theory like a uh, minimal model or uh, what kind of conductors, and, no. So again, B3 is equal to two. So this uh, Galois theoretic, uh, 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 representation theoretic proof is you just analyze two-dimensional Galois representations associated to H3 et al xql. So that's what you do. And then uh, this, uh, this proof uh, is really relies on the uh, Sayas conjecture being established on the uh, residual two-dimensional Galois representations proved by this uh, Carl Wintenberg Kishin in 2009, 2010. So this theorem is about 2010 and 11. Okay, so example, example of a rigid Calabria. So construction is the most fun part of this game, really. Uh, so uh, uh, A3 is the root lattice. A3 is the dot, three dot, and connected by these edges. That's the A3. Uh, associated to A3, my former postdoc, uh, Helena Varel, constructed the Calabria threefold. It, it, it's, uh, first, you uh, look at this equation. So, four variables, and t is another variable. So, uh, t, t, t minus one squares over t minus four. So this equation is in P3 cross P1. So uh, it has singularities. Uh, and then um, uh, if you compute this um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a resolution of this uh, threefold, uh, then you'll get Calabiao. H30 is 1. H10, H20 is 0. H21 is also 0. And H11 is 50. Uh, so H21 is zero. So this is a rigid Calabria defined over Q. And all the characteristic is twice of H11, which is 100. Okay, so it, it should be modular by our theorem. What is the modular form? Uh, so the gamma, the s s two and three are bad primes, if you, because uh, it's one over X, two, two is obviously a bad prime. And from around here, three is coming. So gamma zero of six, you look at this um, modular group, and then uh, you look for weight for modular form sitting in this space in this group for this group. Then that's what you get. Eta function. Uh, so so that that's your f. And then uh, to get this side, to get this side. Uh, yeah, I, I'll do this part first. And then, uh, because uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, to get the L series of this Calabria, uh, our point counting was not right. It was uh, getting too many points compared with the right hand side. So uh, something was wrong or what went wrong. So we had to come up with a different approach to see if this, this is really rigid. So Masahiko Saito and myself constructed another rigid Calabria of threefold. Why? 
which is defined over Q. So this Y is constructed starting out with the rational elliptic surface defined by this hypersurface. Okay? And this, uh, this is a something called the modular construction, depending on the Borbillus construction associated to gamma 1 of 6. And you take the cell fiber product of this surface, elliptic rational surface. And of course you have a res a singularities, so you resolve singularities and you get your y. So this y is rigid with h11 is 50. Because this guy started out with already modular group, Starting with modular group, this is a the, so so the, this so why is modular from the construction? So the question is whether we have any map from x to y or y to x. So we have constructed expressed by rational transformation defined over Q from y to x, so that the uh, L series of y uh, little little s here typo should be equal to the L series of X, which is exactly this. Now, gamma 0 of 6 and gamma 1 of 6, if you projectivize it, they are the same. So, uh, okay, so now L series, so how you look at the L series calculation, this is the point counting uh, argument here. So for good prime here, we count this here. This is the alternating sum of traces. So what trace is, T0P minus T1P, T2P, T3P, and C. Now, T0P is 1, T6 of P is PQ, by point duality. T1P, it's homolo H, it's H1 and H5, they are 0, so these guys are nothing. And T2 and T4, they have a duality. point duality says that uh, that's P times H2, uh, T2. So you get uh, end up here. So the T3P which we need to construct L series, this is exactly you can obtain by point counting. T2 of P is depending on this geometric um, uh, invariant H11, and all these algebraic cycles are defined over Q. This equality is true. If not, you may have to go up a little higher. And T3P is the Riemann hypothesis that this number has to be bounded by twice of P, 3 over 2. For elliptic curves, this is 1 over 2. For Calabria 3, for this is a dimension, 3 over 2. Okay. So then uh, P3 of T is uh, by, it, 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 because the uh, third et al. cohomology group is dimension 2, so you have a degree two characteristic polynomial, and that's the, cons oh, this, this, this construction, this is a total type. N goes down here, and N to the minus S goes to N to the S. And then if you do this, uh, then you have to, this, this is really the direct generalization of elliptic curve situation. Okay, we, we started five minutes late, right? So now, uh, some result for d equal 2. So uh, now let's consider x be a k3 surface defined over q. Then uh, h2, this integral cohomology group, this is a free z module of rank 22. Okay? Uh, it's, it's, well, well, we know h2 xc or h2, h2 eta or qr, they have a dimension 22, but now you consider integral cohomology. So it's a G module of rank 22. And then you have the intersection pairing on X. Uh, so this intersection pairing gives rise to a quadratic form on this uh, Uri module. So it becomes a lattice. Lattice has the following property. It's a unimodular, even, indefinite, in the signature 3 and 19. So then, classification theory of Milnova or geometric theorems gives you that there is isometry from this H two X Z two this lattice. U two U U is the hyperbolic lattice of rank two, and minus E eight is the negative definite unimodular lattice of rank eight. Each one has a we have two by two matrix for U2, and E8 has eight by eight matrix representation. So this is called the K3 lattice. 
So whatever K3 surfaces you choose, always H2 of XZ has this structure, regardless what K3 surface you choose. Okay, so now what we'll do is uh, we'll decompose the H2, its homology group, into pieces now. So uh, you look at neuron severity group. This is generated by algebraic cycles. Uh, so this means uh, divisors, modular algebraic equivalence. And then uh, this is a free, finitely generated, generated abelian group. And then uh, NS of X, this happens always inside the H2, right? So it's intersection with uh, NS of X, it's a lattice intersected with H11. And H11 at the, the dimension 20. So the uh, this rank of this neuron severity group is at most 20, bounded by 20. So T sub X is the orthogonal complement of a neuron severity inside this K3 lattice. So rank is 22 minus loss of X. H2 has 22, rank 22. Uh, it's an orthogonal complement, so subtract the rank of the neuron severity part. This is a group of transcendental cycles. So from the way we decomposed H2 of X decomposes into two pieces, a tensor with QL, and S of X and T sub X. So this decomposition will carry over to the L series, L of X, L of XS yeah, will decompose into the neuron severity part together with the L series of the transcendental part. So this is called a so this is a motivic L series here. This is a motivic L series of algebraic cycles. So the for algebraic cycles, Tate conjecture is true for any K3 surface over Q. That meaning uh, the, the et al part H2 fixed, you look at the cycles fixed by the Galois action, absolute Galois group, will end up with the neuron severity part defined over Q. So uh, L series of the neuron severity, the severity part you can express as the uh, Riemann zeta function uh, S shifted by S minus 1, and then you take the loss of X copies if all algebraic cycles are defined over Q. But this rarely happens. If not, you go uh, some algebraic extension of Q, say L, and then all cycles are defined over L, then you can look at the Dedekind zeta function shifted by S by S minus 1 and the taking a loss of X copies. But these are two ex extremes. Some cycles are defined over Q, some are defined over some extensions, and then so something like Archin L functions coming up here. And then the modularity of Archin L functions are not known. So we have no idea how to do the modularity of the algebraic cycle part. So the, for K3 surfaces, modularity of the motivic L series associated to the transcendental part, then now we call this some um, K3 uh, serves to be singular if the loss of X is the maximum possible value, namely 20, so that the transcendental lattice has rank 2. So you will get two-dimensional Galois representation coming from here. So always two-dimensional Galois representations we know how to handle. So that's the theorem. This is 1995. Every singular K3 surface X over Q is motivically modular. There is a modular form F, weight 3 is a 2 plus 1 on gamma 0 of N with twisted to its character. We have to twist to its character because the weight is odd, uh, the space of modular forms on gamma 0 of N itself is just a scale. There is nothing. So we have to twist to its character. So that, that this L series coincide with the L series of F twisted with this character. Okay, so um, 
So, uh, the, so the color, this theorem is also Galois representation, representation theoretic theorem. Now we have a geometric also proof here. That's a Leibniz, um two-dimensional Galois representations associated to T sub X. That was the way it defined. So, uh, mirror symmetry for K3 surfaces at the end. So there is a mirror symmetry for uh, K3 surfaces. Uh, due to Dolkachev. This is the uh, originally uh, coming, or, or, original uh, um, sort of idea is that uh, Arnold's friend duality. So if X are K3 surfaces, all this X I'm, I'm discussing here, all K3 surfaces are algebraic, okay, defined by equations and all that. You can also discuss K3 surfaces purely topologically. But this are uh, all algebraic cases. So if x is a case three surface, pick our number loss of x, that's the rank of the neuron severity, then there is a mirror case three with pick our number loss of x hat, such that the transcendental cycle of the original case three will factor like a, a hyper, the other lattice here. Lattice is a u plus neuron severity of the mirror. So if you read this off, this side, uh, the rank is a 22 minus loss of x. That should be equal to 2 plus loss of x hat. This means loss of x plus loss of x hat is 20. So the mirror symmetry for K3 occurs inside H11. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, time. Uh, my time is up. That's it. <laughs> Questions?